Welcome to Electra Online. A good application for adding vectors together is the case where I have a plane flying through the air and there's a wind coming from some other direction other than the direction the plane is flying. So how do we deal with that? So here's an example where I have a plane that's flying in a northerly direction at 300 kilometers per hour and there's a wind blowing towards the southeast at 40 kilometers per hour. What is the net velocity relative to the ground? What is the velocity of the plane relative to the ground? And that would then be the vector sum of those two vectors. The vector representing the velocity of the plane and the vector representing the velocity of the wind. Of course, in this case, the velocity of the plane would be the velocity relative to the air. And we've already drawn a drawing of this. Here we have the blue arrow representing the vector that represents the velocity of the plane flying north. The magnitude would then be corresponding to the 300 kilometers per hour. And then we have the vector here representing the velocity of the wind in a southeasterly direction and at an angle of 45 degrees relative to the east. And the length of that vector corresponds to the 40 kilometers per hour, the velocity of the wind. The vector sum, which can be found using the method of parallelograms, you can see that we draw a line from the tip of vector v sub w, the velocity of the wind, parallel to the velocity of the plane. We draw a vector that's parallel to the velocity of the wind from the tip of the vector here, and where the two lines meet, we draw a vector from the origin where the two start at the tails of the two vectors to where the two lines meet. That would be the resultant or the sum of those two vectors. So now if we want to add those two together in another method, algebraically, we need to find the components of each of the two vectors. So that means we need to find the v of the plane in the x direction, and we need to find v of the plane in the y direction. Same with the wind, v of the wind in the x direction, and v of the wind in the y direction. Now, looking at the vector representing the velocity of the plane, there's no components in the x direction. The entire magnitude of vector points in the y direction, so we can see that this is zero. And for the y component, this would then be 300. Of course, the units are kilometers per hour. But when we find the components for the velocity of the wind in the x and the y direction, we do have to take into account that there is an angle of 45 degrees. So in this case, we have v of the wind times the cosine of 45 degrees to find the x component. And this is v of the wind times the sine of 45 degrees. So this becomes, uh, let's see here, 40 multiplied times the cosine of 45 degrees. And this becomes 40 multiplied times the sine of 45 degrees. So let's see what those are equal to. So we have 45, take the cosine of that, times 40, that would be 28.28. Yes, that would be 28.28 kilometers per hour and 28.28 kilometers per hour for those two components. Again, you cannot have a negative magnitude for components, so all the numbers here are positive. But now that we're ready to add the two, we have to take into account direction. Notice that the y component of v sub w, this right here, so this would be v sub w in the y direction, is indeed pointing downwards, that's a negative direction, and here we have v of the wind in the x direction, that's pointing to the right, so that's a positive component. So again, positive component or negative component, that's relative to the direction of those two components. So if we want to find the resultant, which is the sum of the two vectors, which is the velocity of the plane relative to the wind, plus the velocity of the wind, and of course we're going to add the x and the y components separately. The x component, that would be 0, plus, let's see, the x component of v of the wind, that would be, well, yeah, right here, the x component of v of the wind, that would be 28.28 in the x direction, plus, now the y component, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the y component of v sub p, that would be 300, and minus the y component of the velocity of the wind because you see it's pointing in the negative direction, so minus 28.28, and that would be in the y direction. So now we can add these components together, so we have the resultant is equal to 28.28, and the units were, uh, that would be kilometers per hour in the x direction, and here it would be plus 
that would be 271.28 kilometers per hour in the y direction. So this would be the resultant of the velocity of the plane relative to the ground in vector format. But what if you didn't want it in vector format? What if you wanted to know the magnitude, how fast is the plane flying relative to the ground, and what would be the, the direction? So what we have here is we have the direction phi relative to the positive x-axis. So the way to do that is as follows. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, the magnitude of the resultant vector is equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared of the resultant. So this would be the x component and this would be the y component of the resultant. So that means that this is equal to the square root of 28.28 squared plus 271.78 squared. Oh, not 78, that would be 72, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay, slightly different. So it would be 21.72, and this would be 21.72.72, because you have 28 to that. Uh, that's right, so that would be the correct value right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So we have 271.72 squared plus 28.28 squared equals, take the square root, and that would be 273.2. That would be 273.2 kilometers per hour, and that would be the speed of the plane relative to the ground. And finally, we now want to know the direction relative to the positive x-axis. So for that, we say that phi is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side for that angle. And so this would be the inverse tangent of the opposite side. That would be the y component. That would be r sub y over the adjacent side r sub x. And so this would be the inverse tangent of 271.72 seven two divided by twenty eight point two eight all right let's see what that is equal to so two seventy one point seven two divided by twenty eight point two eight and take the inverse tangent of that would be eighty four well, close enough eighty four degrees so that's the direction relative to the positive x-axis the magnitude relative to the ground and the resultant velocity of the plane in vector format. And that's how we do that.